Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Ariel Helwani Meets, and what an exciting one this is. We are sitting next to one of the greatest female professional wrestlers of the past decade, one of the most decorated wrestlers mm -hmm. of the past decade, the leader of Damage Control, the one and only Bailey. Hello. Thanks. That was a How really nice introduction. It's the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see Felt you. Felt good. You Thank too. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. So much to talk to you about. Uh, you've been doing tremendous work as of late. Um, really, really fun stuff, and I'm wondering if the version that we're seeing of you now, maybe the uh, the less friendly version, the mm -hmm. not so nice version, is is more closer to the real you as opposed to the huggable, lovable. If I'm really a jerk. Well, not a jerk, <laughs> but you know, initially when we were introduced to you, you were very happy-go-lucky, yeah. and now you have an edge to you. It, is is this one closer, or is it more in the middle? Mm. I guess it depends who you are. Like, if you ask my friends, my best friends that I've known since middle school, they'd probably say I'm closer to being a jerk. Okay. But if you um, ask my nephews, then, right. you know, I'm the hugger. So uh, maybe a little bit of combo of both, but I'm definitely having a lot of fun right now, and it feels natural. I think it's just like a, it's been a natural growth altogether in the last 10 years here. Uh, was this your idea, or did someone approach you about the Perhaps. whole like character change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was all my idea. Just really? like when it first happened. Yeah. Because I was in, I don't know if you remember, like such a weird time in my career where it wasn't really going where we all thought it would. And I felt the fans turning on me already and just not buying into it. So um, I didn't want to just kind of like coast along and I, d I wanted to I knew when I joined WWE and when I wanted to be a wrestler like I wanted to be able to do everything like, I wanted to be bad be good be in a love angle be in do have this match do it like I wanted to do everything and ride that wave of the WWE you know so I felt it was a perfect opportunity and the the last match I had before like the change was I forget the pay-per-view but I lost the championship to Charlotte and then I had to break down and cry and told me just to throw a fit and cry and cry and I thought it was so strange but you know I did it and I just told myself like I can't come back the same Bailey. Right. So I um, talked to Vince and I talked to my writers and threw out this whole idea of a complete 180 character change and then um, he's like okay we're gonna do it but it was like two days later so I had no time to really, you know, figure out what this is going to be. Uh, and then we did that change, and um, then it's just grown throughout the years now that I've had time to kind right. of settle in and see how the fans react to it. Uh, why did you feel like the fans were starting to turn on you or feel tired? Um, I think it, it, I think to me, what f it just felt natural, you know, it, it, what I was doing that at the time felt unnatural to them, but it, I think it's because I truly outgrew it, like the character I was trying to portray. Because when I was the hugger in NXT and I was um, super fan favorite, I really felt all these things. I really felt in awe to be in WWE. I felt in awe to be around all these superstars because I was a super fan growing right. up, you know? But as I got older and as I had more experience and I had won a championship, you know, it's like, all right, you've done these things, like we're get over it, like get over being excited about being here. You've been here for six years already. So I think it, um, they just didn't feel the, that connection like they used to, which is totally understandable because I don't, I didn't either. Okay. I felt like I was, you know, it was time to just have a change. You mentioned, you know, being a lifelong fan. I've, I've seen you talk about going to meet Rey Mysterio at Popeyes and then yeah. later in the day your dad drives you to go meet John Cena. Yeah. And you love the Hardy Boys and Lita, like you were a legit fan. You were there yeah. when Eddie Guerrero won um, at the Cow Palace against yeah, uh, Brock Lesnar. I mean, so it's cool to see someone live out their dream. And now you just celebrated 10 years oh, yeah. in WWE. When, when that day came, when that anniversary came just a, a few weeks ago, did you take a moment to reflect like that kid who was driving to go see Rey Mysterio at Popeyes? 10 years, everything yeah. you've accomplished, but to last 10 years, in any profession, let alone this volatile one, pretty damn impressive. Yeah, I think that that was the main thing that really sat with me was, you know, it's hard for anybody to sit in a in an indus any industry, any company, any business for 10 years. And to be able to do that, like with WWE, with my dream job, with the place I grew up watching, it wasn't so much that uh, of the fan in me that was really soaking it in. It was um, me as a person thinking about 
my first month at FCW and NXT because that first month was really rough for me. I didn't think I was going to make it to the second month. It just didn't feel like the place I thought it was going to be. And I thought um, I just wasn't going to fit in. I wasn't girly enough. I didn't dress nice enough. And I just didn't have what it took to be a superstar. And uh, so the fact that like now I'm here 10 years later, it's just like, wow, how did that, how did, how did I do that? How did that happen? And how did time go so fast? Were you close to quitting that first month? I wasn't close. Hmm. I don't think I was close to quitting, um, but I, I was just didn't think I was going to have fun, you okay. know, and I, I, I don't think I could, could have ever quit. I thought I was going to get fired because they wouldn't see anything in me, you know, and I think um, Dusty Rhodes definitely like saved me because really? he, he, I had nothing to offer except what I could do in the ring at the time and he like pushed me in promo class and brought out this character in me and brought out my personality, which I didn't think was okay to show because at that time the women weren't really seen like that, you know, and I was didn't think it was okay to be a fan and then that became my character was being the super fan. Right. So um, he definitely saved me and then I started having fun. Speaking of, of the knee, I'm not the only one who would say this. You were one of, if not the MVP of the pandemic era early on, right? You did <laughs> tremendous work yeah. and obviously super tough. You're talking to no one, right? You're talking to a bunch of screens. Yeah. Um, not really, they're in back of you. I mean, you're really in an empty arena with just production people. And the work was so great. And then you get hurt right before the fans yeah. are going to return. How depressing was that? How difficult was that for you? Because it wasn't just like one of those two, three month injuries. Yeah. There was a long road ahead and you were right at the finish line, so to speak, to get that energy back. How did you deal with that? Yeah, that was super, that was so disappointing. Um, there was a part of me after um, they had me come to SmackDown and just kind of uh, do a backstage and say that I was injured and I just couldn't believe it was happening because it was the end of me and Bianca's um, story at the time and I was mad that I let her down that I couldn't finish that story and uh, I was mad that I wouldn't get to be in front of those fans again because I did all that stuff during the pandemic and everything was going really well but I never really got bummed about it until the Royal Rumble huh. which is crazy yeah. like I think it was because everybody's there, you know, and I'm like, damn, I'm like the only person that's not there. So I felt a little left out. That was probably the, um, the hardest one. And then WrestleMania was not even WrestleMania was too hard for me. And I, I flew myself out there and went to the show myself because I wanted to be there for a lot of the girls and having these big matches. And then, um, Dakota texted me, she was asking how I was feeling. And she's like, Hey, I know these big weekends are really hard for when you're injured and you can't be a part of it. I just wanted to see how you're doing. Then it hit me and I'm like, oh, mm. this does kind of suck, but uh, I'm okay. You know, I'm just, I was just happy to be around it again. The genesis of damage control, where did that start? What that was... That is something that I've, I've like thought about for a couple of years before it actually really? happened, you know? Yeah. Wow. Um, and I know Dakota has talked about this in her interviews in the past, like, it had a, a different group of people as the time went on, you know. Um, Peyton Royce was someone that I really wanted in there. And um, Tegan Knox was someone that I wanted in there. There was a lot of people uh, that it just kind of changed throughout time and as people left the company and things like that. But Dakota was always, she's one of the OGs that I always envisioned in this group. I just thought like, there's no women's factions. Like there's been trios. And to me, if it, if it were up to me right now, there would be more of us. Okay. Um, but we'll see, you know. there's There's been trios, but there's never been like a big faction yeah. where there's four or five of us. And that's what I wanted. I talked to Hunter about this a couple of WrestleManias ago, and he told me like, well, you need to know, why are, why are you guys together? Like, oh yeah, you guys are cool together, but find the reason why. Me and DX were this, me and Evolution were this, and explain those things. Then I was like, maybe I need to think about it more. Um, so when I was injured, I thought about it more and shot stuff at the performance center while I was there with a group of girls that I really wanted because at that time I said, I want girls from NXT that uh, I believe are ready for the next step and that I believe are ready for WrestleMania and SummerSlam and Royal Rumble. So I had a group of girls. We did a couple videos and a couple pictures. 
sent it all out until it, you know, could um, see what, what everybody thought about it. And then people get called up, then people got released, and it just all kind of fell apart. And I'm like, you know what, maybe it's not a good idea. So um, up until SummerSlam time, I ha gave a last-ditch effort to Triple H, and that was how this all happened. But to me, damage control is just kind of showing the world how much more there is to offer than what you just see on TV every week, you know? EO and Dakota have so much to offer the world that like, although we're on TV all the time, there's so, there's, they're like reserving a lot for their WrestleMania moments and mm. for their SummerSlam moments. And I want to um, kind of just let them know that they can like do everything, you know, just because the spotlights are on certain people, like you are born to be here. You are meant to be here and to make history. Um, and I just kind of want to be there to kind of, uh, like guide them through not that they need it. They're not younger than we're all the same age Like we've all been wrestling the same amount of time. Um, I just want to be the one person that uh, Kind of just shows others that there's like a Chance for you to make it too. like I don't know I've just had so much help in my career that I want to be able to help others as well to show them that um, It's possible, you know, and they have I think what we're doing right now is just kind of not changing the landscape or anything like that, but because we're all here and we're, we, they're so gifted and they're so experienced, um, we could work with anybody. And we could bring in someone who's only been wrestling for six months or someone who's been wrestling for six years or whatever, and we can put on a match or a story with them. Uh, that's a very long answer, but yeah. I just think that they can do it all and I, I wanna be there to watch it happen firsthand, I guess. Did you come up with the name? Yeah, we all did. You okay. know, I, I uh, had a few different ideas. We threw out a million different names, and they creative came back with a million different names too, and we just couldn't get on the same page. And then, like, you have to also go through um, legal and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. My first original one was called, I wanted to be called The Now because I didn't want to worry. Like, to me, it was, I didn't care about the championships I won in the past. I don't care about what happens next. Like, these girls right here and what we're about to do, like this is all, the, the mm -hmm. present is all that matters. So like the now was my first idea. Um, Why and did that happen? It's like there's a show called the now oh, or right. something like that, you know, right. there's just legal stuff. I like stuff. the play off of NXT, like you're not next, you're now. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, so yes. yeah, that was like, as once I was in NXT, once I was there getting better, I'm like, I need to, I need these girls up with us. Just because we were like, you know, they could refresh the division right, right, and right, everything. Right. So. Um, yeah, then we went through all these things, and I wanted control, and then that didn't work, and, that, and then, yeah, just somehow damage control finally went through. What's the sweet spot in terms of uh, number of people? Like, if it was up to you, how many people would if be? If it was up to me, uh, see, we're so far in now. If you were to ask me at first, I wanted five. Five. And, yeah. And if you could if, add two people, who would they be? I don't want to give it away, you know. Okay, you have but you you have two people I in have, mind. Yeah, I have people in mind, but if it happens, because I still would like it to happen. You okay. Know, I don't want to give it away. Do you feel like that's possible? Yes. You do. Yeah. Interesting. People who are on the roster uh, now, main yeah. roster. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. You're pitching this. Yes and no. Okay. You know, this I, could so, be the pitch right here. Well, yeah. You know. <laughs> hey, honey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's watching, probably. <laughs> let me let me <laughs> let me talk to you. No, there's been like uh, I've sent a few pitches in you know in the past, and he's like, just relax, you okay. know, like you guys need to get established first. And I said, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Which we do, you know. There's still so much for us to to um, show the world and establish ourselves first and Fair. just get excited. That SummerSlam was pretty much like a week into the Triple H era, so to speak. Yeah. So he, it, that show wasn't necessarily viewed as like his complete baby, if you will, but. It felt like, okay, he was now in charge. And I feel like you guys represented the fact that he was now in charge. Mm -hmm. Does all this happen if he's not in charge? No. 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 Not even close. Not even close. What do you think you're doing? What do you mean? Like, is there even a damage control? No. No. What? Oh, so what would I do, be doing? Yeah, if like, who, who would you be right now? I would be... <sighs> to be honest, I don't know. I, I didn't know any ideas that they had for me. 
Um, I didn't, even if I asked like creative, they weren't really sure because they were waiting till I was 100% clear. Okay. So I had no idea what I was doing. Um, to me, it's like, I feel like I would have just fallen back into the same place that I was. Not that that's a bad thing because I didn't get to do anything with the fans, you know, so it is still all being new to me and I would have turned it up a million. But this to me is what I wanted and what I needed. And even in my career, not just to help EO and Dakota and, and the division, but like to me, it just adds another layer and another evolution, another piece of evolution to my character to show a different side of me, to show, uh, I don't know, there's just, it's just more to it than just being me and being, worrying about me and me and me and me and mm -hmm. me. Now I'm like, I got these girls to worry about and um, I love it, it's what I wanted. Is it true that the whole thing came together like on 24 hours notice or yes. something? That, that is legit? Yes. Where are you when you get the call? Um, at, I'm sitting on my couch and then, uh, so I had talked to Hunter the day before he texts me the next day and he's like, oh no, I wake up to a missed call from him. So then I call him back and, cause I'm on the West Coast, all right? It's not right. because I sleep in super yeah, late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he just like tells me what had happened overnight. And I was like, uh, he's also, can you be at uh, SummerSlam this weekend? I'm like, you mean tomorrow? Yeah. And he said, oh yeah, yeah. Like well, of course, and then I freak out and I'm in dripping sweat and I. What happened overnight? Um, so after we had talked, he had contacted Dakota. He had contacted EO. Wow. And I guess talked to Creative, and they figured this whole thing out. And then, um, yeah, and that was it. And he just made sure it ran it by me. He's like, "Is this cool?" I'm like, yeah, this is like exactly. Is, yeah. I couldn't believe it. I I owe so much to him for even believing in me and us in a short amount of time. I sent him one text with a couple videos and a couple pictures and he was all over it, you know? So I owe him everything for this run right now. It's amazing you, you pitch something for like two years or have it in your mind for two years and then 24 yes. hours, it's like, let's go. Yes. Uh, which might be a tough thing to process, but you guys pulled it off. Yeah. Are you happy with how it all went down? Yeah, I'm, that was like such a such a cool moment. I'll never forget the reactions of like, you know, I was excited to hear how people were reacting when I came out, but to hear Dakota and EO's reaction was like, whoa. It was such a, you felt the, the, the fans feel like, oh, like this, things are changing, mm -hmm. you know, and for the better and it's exciting and it's fresh and new. Um, I feel like we still have like, there's a lot that we can um, do to connect with the crowd, you know, or show them who we are. But it's just been, ever since we got here after 24 hours notice, it's been like, bah, 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 bah. so we're all just like playing catch up with um, the WWE universe, I feel like. But man, it's been wild. And I've been so happy and so proud of them. Do you like where it's at right now? The women's division? Yeah, I think there's so much growth. and. What I really want to see is the tag division grow. Mm. Like, is there's so many ups and downs with that, and mostly downs. They're just, um, it's hard to get tag teams together and hard to keep them together. Like, with EO, and not just because EO and Dakota are the champions, you know, like, I, I take those titles very personally because we brought them to existence basically and Triple H had a lot to do with that too. He helped us do that. Um, so I just think there's so much potential in that division and I think if we can get that going it'll showcase more women because there'll be a whole tag division. And um, yeah, I'm very proud of everybody and how it's going right now but the, there's still a lot that could be done. It can always get better. Speaking of those belts, um, your good friend, the, the former Sasha Banks, yeah. won the titles back in uh, WrestleMania of last year. Yeah. Shortly thereafter, she left uh, yeah. the company uh, along with uh, Naomi, and uh, she recently popped up in Japan, yeah. and yeah. you were there. I was there. You yeah. were backstage. Yeah. Now uh, I saw a lot of people saying like, everyone needs a friend like Bailey. Like you were, you, were you, were you strictly there just for support? Yeah, yeah. How long were you in Japan for? Two days. Two days. Yeah. And. Was it your suggestion to be there with her? Did she ask you to be there? With her? How did that no, all go down? No, like, yeah, I went there on my own. There was a few of us that flew out there just because, like, that's a, she's been there for all my big moments, you know? Even 
as as she hasn't been a part of the company and I've made my return and I've had my big matches like she's there for me so of course I want to be there for her and we've done so much together in WWE so um, she means so much to me and so much to the wrestling world like I have to be there for this moment I literally flew out like right after Raw um, got to Japan two hours before the show started wow. and raced over there and made, met a few <laughs> met everybody there and sat in the crowd and like kind of incognito, you know? It was so magical to be there for her and I just knew how important it was to her and, um, and she just loves this, you know? Everybody, everybody knows how much she loves this and how much wrestling means to her and how much WWE means to her and she wouldn't be there without WWE. So I think it meant a lot to her that I was able to go and I made it right back in time, made it back to California Friday morning so I could like fly out for the live events and it was so worth it. Were you holding out hope or even trying to help? Like there was some hope I think when Triple H took over that she might come back. I'll never give up hope. Okay. I'll never give up hope that she'll come back. Do you think it happens? Um, I'll say yes because I mean this is her home, this is her dream and like I love to see what she's doing and what she's going to be doing over the next few months and uh, she's going to literally take over the world, take the world by storm but I know this is her home and where her heart is so um, and by her heart I mean me so sure. she needs to come back yes, to me yes. you know. I need her, I need my travel partner but I, I'm going to say yes like I'll never give up hope that she'll come back. Was it close? Honestly, I don't know. She's a little private about okay. that stuff. Yeah, we talk about a lot, but she's very private when it comes to that situation. You right. know. Um, but nevertheless, you were there. You 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 went to visit her. You went to support her. And then afterwards, did you guys? Afterwards, uh, what did we do after? We literally went and go and had like Korean barbecue. But she was so exhausted, and I'm all jet lagged already. Right. You know. Um, but the next day, we had like a free day to hang out, and. Um, we all just like walked around Tokyo and Shibuya and all this stuff and went shopping, went out to eat. It was, it was a great day. Um, WrestleMania is coming up. Mm -hmm. If you could paint the, the perfect scenario for yourself. Oh, gosh. What is it? Who is it? What are you doing? You've my surely thought of this, right? Yeah, I mean, my perfect scenario in all of WWE WrestleMania is like, me versus Lita, or me versus Sasha, or right now, if I could pick someone, pick something, it's damage control in a big match, you okay. know? And uh, I think that would be very special to me, because I, to share the ring with them too in WrestleMania, it, even if that were the end of it, you know, if that was our last match together, that would make me so proud and so happy. You're doing tremendous stuff. It's Thank a pleasure you. to watch you and also the, uh, the evolution of your character. Not easy to do, be the, like the lovable uh, good girl and then the bad girl now. So yeah. well done to you, keep Thank it up. You. I wish you nothing but the best and thanks for sitting down with us. Yeah, I appreciate it. Bailey, Ariel Meets, another one in the books. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We'll see you next time.